Now before you buy your college textbooks, I highly, highly suggest that you wait before you buy them. Whether you're an incoming freshman or you're already in college, you need to watch this video so you know how to save the most money possible. So let's get to it. What's up YouTube and welcome to my channel ESP, I'm Daniela and for today's video as you already know I will be telling you about how I was able to save hundreds and hundreds of dollars on my college textbooks. Now I know that it is recommended to buy your textbooks before school even starts so that you're ready for class but from my personal experience with my professors from my university it's a totally different situation, it's a totally different scenario. Okay, so the first point I want to make is that some professors, if not a lot of them, will end up not even using the textbook that they asked for for the class. Or if they actually do end up using the textbook, they may only use it for like four or five assignments, but that's still not nearly enough uh, times of it being used for you to go ahead and purchase it, especially if it's a really expensive textbook. So the first thing that you need to do before you even buy your textbooks is to first ask your professor, whether that's in person or through email, saying, hey, do we really need this textbook? Is it really necessary? And a lot of times the professor will still say, yes, it is required to be successful in this class, blah, 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 blah. But what I found out is that some professors who may say that you need this textbook in order to be successful in the class, they're mainly saying that because, because like perhaps part of the sales from those textbooks from their certain classes are going back to them. So it's kind of like all about money for them, right? So if that is the case, I recommend that you get a second opinion from people who took the class maybe last semester, last year, and ask them, hey, did you really need the textbook in order to be successful? And also just an FYI, for most of my classes, I ended up not even having to use the textbook whatsoever because we live in the 21st century which has a plethora of online resources from YouTube and Google and Quizlet and so on. So the same exact information that you would be getting if you were to go ahead and buy the textbook is free for your access through the internet. Okay, so now to actually buying or renting out your textbooks. Sometimes towards the very beginning of your course of the semester, uh, your professor may give you and the whole class free access to the textbook. Now at my school, this scenario has happened on four separate occasions, four different classes, so it isn't necessarily rare for your teacher to suddenly give the class free access to the books. So the last thing that you want to happen is to like buy the textbook way before then, but then when you finally get into the class, the professor is like, oh, I got you all free access to the textbook. So that's just money wasted that you could have spent on something else. See, I actually made the same exact mistake when I was taking uh, two summer courses a couple of weeks back. One of the online courses I was taking was journalism and it required that I get this $50 uh, textbook. And so I decided to get the electronic version because I just like having electronic textbooks, right? However, the thing about ebooks is that they're non-refundable, non-returnable, unlike physical books. So when the class actually finally started, like three or four days into the class, the professor was like, hey, I got you all free access to the book. Bruh, 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 bruh. That was $50 wasted that I could have spent on five box combo meals at Raisin Cane's. I'm still mad about that. But yeah, don't be like me. Don't make the same mistake that I did. Go ahead and wait it out a little bit and see if your professor is going to give the class free access or if you actually need the textbook in the first place. Anyways, that leads me to my next point. When you are actually buying a textbook, make sure, make sure that it has a return policy because every now and then you may catch yourself buying the wrong textbook or the wrong edition that your class requires or something like that and if it's non-refundable then you're not getting your money back you're just stuck with it and also it's good to check if your book is refundable returnable because like what i mentioned earlier your professor may suddenly give the class free access to the textbook 
or you find out that in your school's public library they already have the book for you to use and if this is like a class of where you're barely using the textbook in the first place it's best to just check it out occasionally rather than going ahead and spending your own money on it. With that said again check your school's library collection. Most of the time I can find the textbook that I'm needing for a certain class however at my school's library for textbooks in particular we are only allowed a two-hour time frame to rent it out because you know there's hundreds of other kids is taking the same exact course and they may need the textbook as well. So what I do when I have the textbook checked out is that I take a picture of each individual page that I need to read or reference to later and then I go to my phone's photo gallery and then share each of those images with my Google Drive so that I can pull them up later on my laptop. And also with the library and their textbooks, they tend to have earlier editions of the textbook rather than the latest edition. But what I found out is that nine times out of ten, the earlier editions of textbooks basically have the same exact information as the newer textbook. The only real difference between the older version of the textbook and the newer version is that like the names of certain chapters have been rearranged. So for instance, let's say that in the older edition of the textbook, chapter two is named American History but then in the newer edition of the textbook chapter 3 is named American History but as far as the content of the chapter itself it's still the same exact thing so as long as you know the name or the names of the chapters that you should be reading rather than their chapter number then you should be good now if you are still concerned about whether or not the older edition of the textbook matches up with the newer edition, you can always ask your professor to compare with their textbook or ask one of your classmates to see if it matches up. Now let's say that you are finally done with the class for the semester and that you're wanting to return the book that you bought and get like almost a full refund on it, right? Well, <laughs> the gag is is that a lot of times in many cases you will not I repeat, you will not get the refund that you are looking for. For instance, last year my roommate, she had to buy a textbook for one of her classes that cost over $100. She bought it through Amazon, I think. And once the class was over, she tried to return it back to Amazon, but they literally would only give her $20. Bruh. Let me remind you. She spent over $100 on that textbook, and they only gave her back $20 when returning it. See, there are two main reasons why the value of textbooks go down so significantly when you're trying to return them. Reason number one, it's used. A used book is going to be less expensive than a new book. And reason number two is that textbook companies are constantly printing off newer editions of the same exact textbook. So that would mean that the book that you bought that was at the time the newest edition is now an older edition so it loses a lot of its value. So that's why in my opinion it's best to just go ahead and rent a textbook rather than buying it. Preferably it would do you much better to rent a ebook textbook rather than a physical copy textbook because ebooks are digital meaning they are less expensive because they're not having to print off paper. And number two the reason why I prefer ebook rentals is because um, it's easier for you to like take your notes because you can just copy and paste what you need to onto your notes document or you can use the keyboard shortcut uh, control find to easily navigate throughout your textbook rather than having a physical textbook of where you have to go to the glossary, go to the index to find what you're looking for. And also don't forget about buying a used textbook. Like I said earlier, used textbooks are cheaper than newer textbooks because they're like hand-me-downs. You can get a used book for cheaper through online stores or your school's bookstore. And also some people at your school may be advertising through social media that hey they have a certain textbook that they are selling for a fair price and that you could possibly buy it from them. So the next tip that I have for you guys is to cross compare prices. This is so, so very imperative, so very important. For example, for my journalism class, we were required to purchase a workbook because many of our assignments would be generated from it. So on my school's online portal, it directed me to the school's uh, on-campus Barnes & Noble of where I could buy the workbook. However, buying it through my school, through Barnes & Noble, would have cost me $65 buying it new and $45 for renting it. However, with me being very frugal, I still wasn't satisfied with those prices, so I did some more research. And guess what I found? 
I found the same exact book through Google Books for only $20. I repeat, $20. Not 65, not 45, but 20. So with that being said, the best two websites you can use to cross compare prices of textbooks are bigword.com and techsurf.com. With these two websites, they cross compare more known stores such as like Barnes and Noble and Shegg, as well as lesser known places that tend to have even cheaper textbooks. See, I noticed with other YouTube videos that suggest places to buy your textbooks, they mainly refer you to chegg.com. However, for me personally, I have only ever bought one textbook for Chegg because I'm always finding alternative websites that have the same book for even cheaper. Now, one thing to note about these two websites is that they do not cross compare Google Books. So you will have to do a separate Google search to see if Google Books has uh, the book you're needing for even cheaper. Another helpful tip is that sometimes, on rare occasions, you will be able to find the book that you are needing for free online as a PDF. However, with these free online PDF textbooks that you may find, most of the time the textbook will be an older edition, an older version. But like I said earlier, older edition of textbooks tend to have the same exact content as the newest version, so you'll still be just fine. So another thing that I really want to say is that whether you're sociable or anti-sociable like me, make friends. Your friends will help you get through college, especially if they are in the same class as you. So that means when it's the very first day that you're in a class, go ahead and intentionally seek out people who you can see yourself communicating with and ask them for their phone number, their social media, and even better if you guys could possibly form a group chat because the more people you have in your group chat, the more likely you are to receive the resources that you need, such as like screenshots from certain pages in the textbook, or perhaps uh, they could share their notes or other helpful things that you will need for the class. Finally, if you are a student, then go ahead and sign up for Amazon Prime. Right now, I still think that they are doing the six-month free trial for students. So all you have to do in order to get access to that is to uh, make an account using your student email address that your university or college gives you. It's really just that easy. And the great thing about Amazon Prime is that they have two-day free shipping guaranteed, so if you're needing a textbook as soon as possible, it's best to just go ahead and buy it through Amazon Prime. The very, very last thing that I want to say is that a lot of music and movie streaming services such as like Spotify, Tidal, Apple Music, Hulu, Netflix, and so on, are offering free trials or reduced rates for students. And I say this because coming from me, a 4.0 GPA student, by the way, I tend to be a lot more productive when it comes to taking notes or studying for exams when I'm listening to music or if I'm trying to de-stress myself, it's always good to just marathon and binge watch through a certain series on Netflix. Okay, so that's all for this video. Please, please, please do like, subscribe to my channel, share this video, and comment down below if you have any other tips or if you would like any other advice. And if you want to follow me on social media, that would be great. And also watch my other videos, which will be over... Oh, this camera. Here? Here. 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 Right here. I can't figure this out. Anyways, bye.